Hello, this is Pastor Randy Estes from Victory Church here in Abilene, Texas, and I'm so glad to be with you on a Sunday evening again as you and I join the conversation. Amen. Amen. Man, we had a wonderful, at least I know I had a good time this morning. I had a great time. Oh my goodness, I was jumping and hooping and hollering and <laughs> shouting, and I'm glad to have Brother Cleo with me, glory to God, and Amen. we're just going to, we're going to pray, and then we want you to get your Bibles out. And we're going to jump into the Word of God tonight. This is good. And we're going to talk to you about your call. Man. And the reason for it is the Lord spoke to me in the month of July. And he said, uh, in the month of August, I want you to go all the way back to the call that I put on everybody's life. Amen. Uh, and I want you to minister about the call. And I said, Lord, you know, most folks know about the call. He said, they hardly know a thing about it, is huh. what he told me. <laughs> and so I said, well, all right, Lord. And so, I, boy, the more, I, the more I got the scriptures out for it and put them together, the more excited I got. And uh, I, I wanted to go baptize myself in water all over again. I'm not lying to you, man. It was wonderful. This is powerful. This it is, is powerful. powerful. It's powerful stuff. Powerful. And uh, so we're going to share with you. We want you to join in with us. And we're going to pray. I'll tell you how you can email us or text us or get your questions or prayer requests to us because we want you to know how important that you are to God. You are so important yeah. that uh, God, before the foundation of the world, God put a call on your life. He did it. I mean, he laid you out and he, he put a call to call you out of darkness into light. Yes. It's a holy, heavenly call. And so let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the wonderful, Hallelujah. glorious call of God Hallelujah. on our lives. Yes. And that call delivers us, sets us free. Yes. And I give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. And uh, you may want to get your Bibles out. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and then Romans chapter 8. But let me give you all the information. That way you can tell your friends. You'll have it down. If you'd like to email us, you can go to Victory Church. 2943 Victory Church 2943 at gmail.com. You know about the social media www.randiestesministries.org. You can click on the Facebook or Twitter links there and you can send in your prayer requests to us, your questions. You can call us, area code 325 673 4041, anywhere in the United States. Anywhere. It don't matter, I'm going to pay anywhere. for it. 1-800-373-8285. I got it. Oh. And if you want to text me, it's 325-665-2942. I, I average it, uh, most weeks at least 40 to 50 texts back from all of y'all. I want to thank you so much. And, uh, man, we appreciate how you're responding, yes. that you get encouraged, uh, your testimonies, what the word for the day does for you. Yes. We've got so much to offer you. If you'll get on that page, mm -hmm. you'll be able to. There's so many things we can do for you to bless you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. First Corinthians 15, 57. Now thanks be unto God that gives us the victory, the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We start right there because what we want is for you to get the knowledge that you are going to get the victory. In complete, fact, the victory is complete, complete, complete victory. Complete victory. victory. In every area. That's why we named this ministry 20 years ago, Victory Church, yes. is because when, I, when we were praying about it, my wife and I, we were praying, God said, name it Victory Church, because I want to give people the victory. Amen. And that's what this is about. So hang Amen. on. Amen. We're going to jump into victory. Let's go to Romans Ooh. chapter 8, and we're going to start reading in verse number 28. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. Listen carefully. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Okay. That's where we started this thing out, going all the way back to the fact that God has a call on your life. Man. You're more important to God than you realize. The enemy has spent maybe your whole life demeaning you, yes. accusing you, condemning you, judging you, and the Lord's got a call on your life that will call you out of all of that. Yeah. Call you away from all the destruction. Call you away from all the misery. Call you away from all the darkness. Call you away from all of those habits. Call you out of all those situations. 
Hallelujah. Amen. The calling, the calling that he has for you is where everything is, is set up. Yeah, it's set it's, up. It's the total setup. Yeah. Your call is a total setup yeah. that you're looking for. If you're out there yes. and you're and you're kind of muddling around in, in the muck and the nasty and this and that, you're what you're looking for, what you need to hear, and I hopefully this is a powerful message. I've been excited to get here this evening because mm -hmm. I know about this. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that I know. I, I'm, I'm young in this in the ministry, but I know this. Mm -hmm. I know the about hearing the call <laughs> and being pulled out of every everything. Yes, hearing the call. Hearing it. And and this is how it works for your good. When it works for your good when you'll recognize that you're called. Yes. When you'll just get the right. It's so important to God yes. that He has a call on your life. Mm -hmm. You say you might say to yourself, Well, you know, uh, I've done this, but that does not erase the call. No. That does not overcome the call. Mm -hmm. That does not stop the call. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Listen to this, for whom he did foreknow. Mm -hmm. Can, can I tell you that God knew about you before you were born? That God knew about you before your parents were born? Amen. That God knew about you before the foundation of the world? And he predestined you, verse 29, to be conformed to the image of his son. The call of God on your life is to be like Jesus. Amen. The call of God on your life is so that you will conform, not to this world, not conform to our to habits, to addictions, to problems, to what happened to you, but to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. The image of him. That's what God has in store for you, to call you into a relationship, mm -hmm. even stronger than relationship, yeah. call you into communion, but something even stronger than communion, to call you into conformity to his only son. No longer you that lives, but Christ lives in you. Think about that. He, he has called you, so that he can put Jesus in you. If you abide in me and my word abides in you. He's called you. Mm -hmm. So that you can get everything off you that's been done to you. Or that you've done to yourself. Everything and conform to the image of Jesus. That's the powerful, that's the powerful fact of the, yeah. of the call of God on our lives. What, you know, and, and, and people are struggling. You know, I've been pastor a long time. They come to me, what, 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 what's God's will for my life? What? What does God want me to do? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? What you really need to do is answer the call of God and then let the Holy Spirit and the Word of God start working in you that you become like Jesus. That's the, the will of God. That is. That do is. you understand that? That is. That, that secondary is for me to be a pastor. Right. Secondary is for me to be a husband or to be a dad. Secondary. That's a part of the call. But the emphasis of the call is that I am conformed into the image of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. That settles everything, yes, heals does. everything, yes. delivers everything, overcomes yes. everything. Come yes. on. Yes. Because he's the victor. He is. He is the victor. He lived, he lived, his, he lived his entire life mm -hmm. in victory. If you'll read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see that mm -hmm. Jesus never was defeated. Never. He never was defeated. So when we conform to that image, we're never defeated. Yes. In in the conformity to that image, I'm never defeated. And what once I hear that call, I'm never again to walk in, in defeat because I'm like Jesus. I'm just like him. Bone Amen. of his bone, flesh, flesh of his flesh. Yes. Amen. We're we're just like him and we can live in that kind of victory. I know it's not popular out in the world today, but you can live in complete not 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 dealing with the situation yes. for the rest of your life, but Jesus, when the storm came, he got rid of it. Yeah. When blindness was around, he, he made got him rid see. Of it. That's right. And that's what we that's what we're called to. That's what we're called to. Complete yeah. and total and utter yeah. victory in, in him. him. We live. Yes. And move and have our being. Listen to this scripture. Moreover, verse thirty, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. Listen to these steps. He foreknew who we were. Yes. He foreknew that we were going to be gone. And then he put a call on our life. Calling us. Calling us to his, to his 
love, calling us to be washed in the blood, yes. calling us to his word, Hallelujah. calling us into his kingdom, Hallelujah. calling us into his family, calling us into his victory, yes. calling us, I could talk about this yes. all night, calling us into his way of living, yes. amen? And then whom he called, he justified. Now this is far fact. When I, when I answer that call that God puts on my life, he justifies my life or just as if I never sinned or just as if that never happened to me. He sets me free yes. from what I've done. He sets me free so that, that I won't get out there in that call with that mess still on my life. Amen. And I won't try to Amen. answer this call. You can't be conformed to Jesus with all that junk passed on you. No, you got to get that it That stuff's working on you. And so the Lord wants to take all the stuff off of me so that he can replace it with himself. Can I, can I put that on you right now? That God wants to remove every burden, every care, every yes. hindrance, every sin, every mistake, every problem, every situation, every circumstance, and replace it with him. In fact, it says this, that you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus I mean, Christ. inside, outside, upside, downside. I mean, you're walking in the spirit. You're walking right. in love. You're, you've got the Lord on you. Glory yes. to God. So he calls you, then he justifies, or he wipes out your past. It's just as if you never made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And then it says, whom he justifies, them he glorifies. Glory. That's awesome. <laughs> Glory. Man. Glory. You know, Tom, folks, you say, glory. <laughs> glory. Thank glory. God for the glory. I mean, I want to live a life of glory, but you can't live a life of glory in God. Live a life of the glory of God, giving glory to God, all the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Yes. Glorious liberty. Glory. Because it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You can until God takes that old off of you. So you can step into that new in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Take that old off so you can step into that new in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah to God. So let's go to the book. Uh, and let's stay there in Romans chapter 8 and go all the way down to verse number 33. Now hang on to this. Who so shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies so when you, when you answer the call of God, when you, when you say, Lord, I'm answering your call, that means that, that you've got to believe that you are more important to God than you think. Man. I said that I don't know how many times this morning. You are more important to God than you think. Yes. Right? You're way more. You, you're called. He has a certain purpose, mm -hmm. a certain thing. A plan. That he wants you to do. No one can do it quite like you can do it. Mm -hmm. No one can preach quite like he can preach. And if he decided that he didn't want to preach, there would be nobody that could preach like quite like he can. We're we're that we're that unique to God that we yes. and he's so powerful and he it's too big for words, but he is so much God that he has a unique thing that only he wants you to do it. Yeah. yeah. He wants you to do it. The God of this yeah. world. The God of this world, through His yes. Son, wants yes. you to do it. Yes, and 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 and, and that's powerful because people, mm -hmm. you you might know, you might be, or you might know someone that you know is just out there, mm -hmm. walking around. They may they may still be in the darkness, but once He turns that light on, you you'll begin to see that there is. I'm called by God, yes. and then He'll point you in that unique direction. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, there's lives that you can touch. There's things that you can do for God, but only you can do it. And if you'll get a hold of this, I'm telling you, if you'll, you'll get a hold of this, just know that you're called. Yes. And walk in that direction, he will provide. He will yes, show you. He will, I know this. <laughs> I know this. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm here today. Yes. Because all I did one day is said, okay, Lord, I know I'm called. Yes. I'm heading in that direction. I'm heading that way. And here we go. That this, amen. That's all you've got to do is answer amen. the call. Yeah. And and don't worry about what you've done. He justified it. Yes, he did. Through Jesus' death. Yes. On the cross, you're dead. That's dead to you. Mm -hmm. You were in him. It's all taken care of. I told people at the communion table this morning, Colossians 1.12 says that we he has made us to be partakers of the inheritance yes, right. of God. That's right. And I told him, you you owed, but now you all you don't owe anymore. All you do is inherit. Yes. You went from an owner to an inheritor, and just that quick. Mm. And people that partake of from this inheritance, 
from death to deliverance. That's right. Now you are partaker of it. Mm -hmm. And now you can just go and you don't have to worry about what you've done yes. because it's already been taken you care of. You can't even answer the call without God justifying you. Right. Because because there's sin there, there's discouragement there, there's the devil condemning you, there's there's that judgment, there's what you know about yourself and your conscience. Yes. And so you can't even answer this great heavenly holy calling. Ooh. And the devil's going to try to convince you that you can't answer the call of God because he's going to remind you of all the mistakes that you've made, right. what you've done to yourself, what everybody else has done to you. But you've got to answer this call no matter what so yes. that you can answer it. What God did, he laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Yes. He laid all of my sins, all of my mistakes, all of my problem, all of my lawlessness, all of my error, all of my shortcoming, all of my, everything about me, he laid it on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he bore my sins, he bore my lawlessness, he bore my mistakes. Everything wrong I'd ever do, everything wrong I could do, Jesus bore it all so that I could answer the call of Man. God Walk into that call totally justified, just yes. as if I never did it, because Jesus bore it, paid the price for it. He took my junk and gave me his righteousness. Hallelujah. He took my disobedience yes. and gave me his obedience. Yes, he did. It. So that did I it. could answer the call. And when the devil says, you're not worthy of this, I can answer back, oh, yes, I am. Uh -huh. Because Jesus Christ took my sin. He took my problem. He took my circumstance. He took my mess, mm. my mistakes. And made a message out of it. And yes. the message is, I'm called by God. I'm called. I'm called by God. Uh, you know what? This will heal everybody if we could get it into them. This would fix everything because I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm going to preach later on. And I hadn't got to it yet in my sermon. But I've been called unto liberty. Mm -hmm. And when you get a hold of the fact that you've been called unto or into liberty. Yes. That is a freedom that is that, that most people don't even know about. Mm -hmm. It is, a, it is a liberating power that really no weapon formed against you there can <laughs> prosper. No plague can come nigh yeah. your dwelling. You can just it's live. liberating. You can just live. You can yeah. just live this Function and life in glory. Because we're justified. Yes. You can just live it because you're justified. That's mm -hmm. the freedom to go to work and not be, con not be messed with by anything at work. Or go somewhere where your family is and not be harassed by all their mess or harassed. Yeah. By other, no matter where you go, you're in you're in the liberty to be who God has called That's you right. to be, and to live. It's 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 my right now. It's I have the right to be a son of God. I have yes. that right. It's been given to me. It's a gift given to me from God to yes. to be a son of God. And as a son of God, all these promises in this book belong to me. Thank you, Jesus. So no matter where I go, I get to live it. So it says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elected is God that justifies. Man. You can't justify yourself. Nobody else can justify you. You could, you could do something to somebody and they say, I forgive you, but you still have that measure of condemnation on the inside of you. Yeah. The devil will know that you did it mm -hmm. and he'll eat you up. Look what you did to that person. Yeah. You've got to go to God. You've got to let the blood of Jesus wash you, justify you. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what clears it all away. Yes. That's what washes it completely away. Yes. So nobody can charge you with anything. Mm. Who can lay anything to the charge of God? As far as God's concerned, you are free from that mistake. You are free from that sin. You are free from that problem. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Amen. the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Because I want you to get a hold of the fact that you are important, so important to God that he called you before you were ever born, before your parents were ever born, before you ever made those mistakes, God, knowing about those mistakes, still called you. He called you even knowing that there were all of these mistakes that could be made. All of this junk. We were all born sinners. Yes. He knew about them. He said, okay, I'm going to call Randy. I'm going to call Cleo. I'm going to call all of these people. Here's what I'm going to do. So that they can answer my call and live in it, I'm going to send my son to bear their mistakes, their iniquities, their sins. He's going to bear them. I'm going to put my punishment that I should have given to Randy. I'm going to give it and put it on Jesus. Man. And therefore, Randy can walk away with that call of God on his life totally justified yes. or just as if he never made a mistake because I put that all on Jesus. Amen. Woo! Man, it's just way too quiet in here. Man. I'm going to do that right now. Put the water right. up. We're about to run out. You got it all right out here. <laughs> you know when. Yes, just ask it loud. Is that not 
the reason why a lot of people they say that there's something missing in their life. Yes. They spend time searching and searching. Yes. For what it is that's missing in their life, and that tends to lead them to drugs. That yeah. tends to lead them to alcohol. Yes. In well, all of these areas. Yes. When all it is is the call of God. The call of God. They don't even know what the call is. of God fulfills everything. Yeah. Mm. Now listen. We had a young man this morning that basically has, he came, he has hardly ever been to church in his life. He sat on the front row, hardly ever been to church in his old life. He comes up to me after church, tears just rolling down his face. He said, I needed this, and I need to come down here, I need to come down here as often as I can. We had a lady, they couldn't come this weekend, we had a, we had a lady and her daughter that last week came to church the first time they'd ever walked into the doors of a church. Man. Wow. First time mm. they ever walked into the doors of a church. Am I right about that? Am I telling the truth over there? I'm looking at the, the, the folks that invited them. Never walked and they would be here today. They, they want to be here. They want to be here every time Ooh. the door opens because th what they felt, what happened. Never been to church in their life. Now you think about that. What it is is that that call of God on my life, I, I'm going to search until I realize that I fit somewhere. I'm going to keep yes. looking. Yes. I'm looking for something and don't yes. realize I'm already called to it. Yes. The call of God is on my life. Can I get can I get those of you that are listening to God has called me. Wow. I have a call of God on my life. I need to answer everything. The call of God is on my life. I don't you know I'm giving we're giving people so much equipment to work with. Oh, my man. God ought to be going in the dark. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm telling you that once you fit in a place, once you know that you're called of God, you don't need to be looking in drugs. You don't need to be looking in the world or looking to a habit or looking, you know, what, what is God's will for my life? The will of God is for you to say, I've got the call of God on my life, and I'm going to be conformed into the image of Jesus. That's the will of God. Mm. The will of God is that God's calling you to, to be conformed to the image of Jesus. He's going to make a child of God out of you. Yes, yeah. The will of God is to make you a child of God. That's right. Yes. That is, and, and, and you know, all the time, especially with young men, I get young men, well, what, what am I called to do? I, and, I, and I have to tell them, you're called of God to be made a child of God. You're called of God to be made a child of God. People yeah. struggle with the will of God, and they don't need to struggle. If you'll just say, I've got the call of, I am so important to God that he's, he's, I've got a call of God on my life. He picked me out. He chose me. He, he chose me. You have not chosen me. I chose you. You didn't choose God. You know, somebody said, I found the Lord. He wasn't lost. <laughs> he knew right where he was. Yeah, he found you. Yeah. You, you say, you know, the Lord found me. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and so that's the truth. So you're telling the truth, sister. Hallelujah. I'm glad to see you growing in the Lord out there. Hallelujah. God. God, oh, uh oh, hallelujah. I'm in trouble now. Uh -oh. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, who hath, past tense. Because done. when he called me before the foundation of the world, he said, all my blessings in order. Mm. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. All my blessings are already there. Oh. Who hath blessed us, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in Jesus. Mm. So when the Lord called the plan into effect, when God the Father and God the Son, Jesus, the Word of God, came together and created this plan, mm. we were called in Jesus. Here's Jesus, here's God, and in the plan he called us in Jesus Christ. Yes, he did. We are called in Jesus Christ. Oh. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Chosen us in Jesus before the foundation of the world. Here it is. That we should be holy and without blame. Mm. Oh, my without God. Without blame. That's justified. That is. That's justified. You're not holy, but you're not holy because you feel it. You're holy because you've been justified by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. You are without blame. But the, here's the blame game. The devil's going to keep blaming you. Yeah. People are going to keep blaming you. Oh, people are blaming you for something you did 20 years ago, and you've already got it right with God. They won't let it go. They just won't let it go. But God lets it go. He throws it into the sea of forgiveness. The devil is going to spend every moment he can of your life 
blaming you, condemning you, judging you, attacking you. And that, Every minute. That blame game, it, the blame game never is, a, it's one of those, it's like the song that never ends. Yeah. It, it's, it, it can just keep going back and forth. Back because and forth. We're all, because we all make mistakes, therefore we can sit here and blame each other all day long. And that's what the enemy wants for mm -hmm. the body of Christ to sit around blaming one another for this or that. No, yeah. we need to get, a, get from the blame game and just say, hey, we're all blameless. Yeah. I forgive you. You forgive yeah, me. Let's go on. We're all blameless. Let's go on and win the world for Jesus. Let's go yeah. on and fulfill our call. Let's go on and fulfill it yeah. instead of sitting around blaming one another about this or that or some mm -hmm. things that don't even really matter. What matters is that Jesus is Lord and that we need to get him to this world. Do you believe that, that the will of God is that I would go to work and, 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 trying to, and, and quit trying to figure out if where I'm working is the will of God or not for my life and just go to work and not let all the stuff they're doing bother me and I can keep growing in God even though they're acting up that that's more of the will of God than anything yes, else. Yes, yes. Do you understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes. That the will of God is, is that I don't notice all this junk out there because I'm hid with Christ in God. And in Him I'm living. I'm not living uh, based upon what the economy is doing or the job is doing or this is doing. Oh, I want to be at the right job. What, what if the will of God is just that whatever job that you're at there, you don't let what's going on mess with you so much. You fall apart. Come on. Yeah. You understand? Because God, there's a thousand possibilities of jobs, but who's going to walk in the will of God that the one they're at, they're not going to let nothing bother them. Yeah. Or they're not going to let their children bother them, that they're walking so much in the will of God that, Lord, you called me. I've got it now. I'm walking in your will. My kids aren't going to discourage me and realize that if God called me and got me there, God's got to call on them and he's going to get them there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It took us a long time to get there. It's going to take them a little while to get there, too. Yeah, amen. 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 Hallelujah to God. So I, I, I'm telling you that the will of God has been an elusive thing, but still right underneath people's noses. Yeah. The will of God is simply that I can live this life in victory no matter what's going on around me. No matter, Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I'm going to be content. Yeah. Whatever state I'm in. He, he, was, a, he was the masterful writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. Yes. And still worked on tents. Yeah, he was a tent builder. He was a tent maker. So he worked on tents and did this. And he and he wrote to some of the churches. He said, you know, I've got other churches that are helping me because you don't help me at all. So everything was all messed up around the church and out there. But Paul learned how to do the will of God and not let what people did get him down. Yeah. Am I right about it? You're right. And, and the will of God is he put Jesus as to be conformed to Jesus as the, the will of God. That's it. Because all this other stuff that we look at there is really is really just distraction. It's really just distraction. If you can just know that the will of God is for me to be like Jesus. And yeah. if I'm like Jesus, then I, I'll, I'll win. Yeah. And, and I keep going back to that because it, it's the truth. If I'm like Jesus, I win. I'll win. Yeah. It's, I, I got this story on my heart. Jesus in the middle of all these people and they bring a naked woman to him. Yeah. And, and they're wanting Jesus to, to stone her or join in on the stoning and join in. Could you, join in. Could you imagine? I mean, I think sometimes we don't imagine just how crazy it was wherever Jesus went because he was that kind of man. Yeah. When he went somewhere, it wasn't like two or three. There was probably thousands and thousands of people. At every turn. Every turn yeah. watching him, yeah. walk, seeing what he was going to Wanted do. Wanted to get an accusation against him. Yeah. Wanted, but it, it, all the time. And this is why he is our image, because all the time he stayed in control. Mm -hmm. And he was so powerful that he overcame what thousands of people wanted to do, yeah. forgave the lady. She got up, followed him, mm -hmm. and, and her whole life changed, and everybody else's life around that changed, yeah. because that's why he's our image. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to get our eyes off of, well, am I, am I this, or am I a pastor, am I... A, uh, no, I'm called by God. I'm mm -hmm. called by God to be like Jesus. And when I understand that and just accept that fact first, then through the Holy Spirit, Jesus can tell you, I want you to do this for me. Mm -hmm. I want you to be this kind of person. I want you to be a preacher. I want you to be a teacher. But you won't get there if you're trying to get to the preacher-teacher part. 
without realizing I need to be like Jesus first. Yeah. You really don't want to get there, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> realizing that I, you need to be like Jesus first. Because if you're if you're not like Jesus and you get out there, then you're gonna. The think enemy's about this. Gonna get Jesus you. has got this call on his life. I always do those things that please the Father. Right. So he was predestined, uh, set down in the right place, born in Bethlehem, where it's prophesied. Yeah. Moved to Nazareth because they it was prophesied that he'd moved to yeah. Nazareth. So his life is completely chosen for him, predestined for him. He always did those things that pleased the Father. Right. He goes into a town. He heals everybody. He sets them free. So they pick him up. They try to take him up a hill and throw him down and kill him because he's just obeyed God. Mm. They say he has a devil when he sets people free. Yeah, come on. They say he's crazy, that he's a lunatic, that he has a devil. They try to kill him. They judge him. They mock him. They, all of this stuff they do to Jesus, and all he's doing is the will of God. Yes. See, the will of God keeps you. The will of God keeps you safe and sound. It, it, it kept Jesus just doing it the said call. That he walked right past it. Walked right past it. Couldn't find it. <laughs> you know what they said? We're going to get our hands on you and we're going to throw you down a hill. And they, could, they couldn't even find him to get their hands on him. Mm. Everywhere they tried to get him, they couldn't get him. He just passed All he did was obey the call. Yeah. Yes. All he did was obey the call. Listen to this scripture right here in Ephesians. It says this. It says, having pre verse 5. Having predestinated us to the adoption of children hmm. by Jesus Christ unto himself, to God, according to the good pleasure of his will. So we were chosen to be adopted into the family of God. Yeah. The Lord has, the Lord, that's how much he loves me, is that I have been chosen, I have been called to be adopted, in, listen now, into the family of God. Hmm. Into the family. Into the family of God. I had uh, my my daughter had a uh, a friend of hers from school and uh, I mean from from work she used to work at they came down from Dallas her and her brother had church with us this weekend and she's now calling herself my second daughter she kid hey hey dad this is your second daughter over here she's saying that to me she's she's you know what I mean she's yeah. wanting to get adopted into this family do you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Folks, but that's nothing like getting adopted into the family of Almighty God. Right. You've got to wake up to the fact that you're adopted into the family of God. That that's why God chose you. That's why God called you. He's calling you into his family. Now, let's talk about that. That's why the devil fights you. Yes. He wants you to feel displaced. Yes. He wants you to feel all on your own. He wants you to feel like you're facing everything by yourself. Yes. When you're adopted into the family of God. Mm. I've got to get that into your, you've been, you have been called to be put into the family of the living God. Can I just say that one more time? One you more have time. been called to be placed into the family. It don't matter what color you were born, what name, what city you were born in, mm. what hospital you were born in, what country you were born in. No. It doesn't matter if you're from Africa, America, Europe, it doesn't matter anywhere you are born. What matters is, is that the God has called you to be adopted into his family. I am a child of mm. God, and I was chosen to be one. Uh, it's not a mistake. To be one. I was not created out of a mistake. Mm. I was created out of a choice, a call of God. He wants me in his family. Ooh, man, yeah. he wants us. That's He wants me he wants in you. his family. He wants He, he wants me. Yeah. In his family. Now I'm limited to what I can do for my daughter right here. I'm limited to certain things that I can do. But now I have been chosen to be in the family of an unlimited God. Good. Unlimited, do you understand yeah. that? An unlimited God. I'm chosen to be God's son, Jesus's a brother and sister in Christ. Wow. I'm chosen by God. I am God's choice. Mm. I am God's choice as a son. Woo! Man. And Do you and, understand that? And every, everything, every, and he was saying it, that you, sometimes with each other, we're limited in what we can do. Yeah. But God can wipe away anything. He can take care of any mistake. Any. He can, he can take care of any debt that I'm in. He can take care of anything that I've done, said, yeah. thought about. What I mean, it's so complete in his family mm -hmm. that there's no one, no one feels God said he's so powerful that he can love everybody 
uh, as he can love everybody at the same time. Same level. He lo he loves you as much as he loves me at the same time. Yeah. That he can give all of us attention at the same time. If there's no schism in the there's body. Nothing, there's no nothing. Difference. He can through his Holy Spirit he can bring his love to us at any moment, right. at any time, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on. If you'll respond to this uh, this message is this message is for you out there yeah. today that are listening that are that are wondering, you know, what what is my what is the will? What no the will is to say, Hey, I'm called. Yeah. And get a hold of that. And, and I promise you, I know this, I promise you, if you'll just accept it, okay, I'm called, and I'm going to head in that direction. Yes. Once you do that, everything, then, the, the setup, Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost, he had to do that first, and then here we go, down the line with miracle after miracle after miracle. Do you believe that when you're called and you answer it, everything that God has, he's going to give to you? He's going to do it. You know, the other day, Courtney called on the phone, she said, Daddy, I'm going somewhere with some of the... Uh, other couples and other folks in the church were going to go do something together. Can I can I borrow one of your vehicles? And I said, well, sure you can. And so she came over and got it, and, and she didn't ever want to give it back. But she came over and got it, and here she went. She didn't have to check and see if there was gas in it because she was, you understand yeah. what I mean? I didn't say to her, well, make sure you bring it back. You bring it back with gas in it and washed and the tires checked. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't, but, but you understand, she might have offered it, but she had offered it to her mother. <laughs> but, but you understand what I mean? Yeah. It, none of that matters. And when you are called by God into his family, you, you need to wake up. That's, that's, that's greater than you can imagine. Man. Your, your family has shortcoming. Your family may not be able to, but when you're in the family of God, God's the father of this thing. <laughs> And God loves you, and God wants to bless you. It says, if you, being evil, know how to give good yes. gifts unto your children, how much more shall much the Father more. give good things to those that ask him? My right. God, how hang on to your hat. You know what I mean? Good stuff. Glory to God. So th this is the power of God. Let's, let's turn into our Bibles. Let's go to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Because we need to get the fact that we're called by God. And I tried to emphasize that if I'm called by God, then everybody in my family is called by God. Yes. Everybody born of me or around me is called by God. Amen? Amen. Because God cannot just call one in the family without calling everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I like what you said yeah. this morning, that God and even Peter found out about it in the book of Acts. He said, truly, I know that yeah. God is no respecter uh, of, persons. of persons. And he, so it doesn't matter about me or you. We're all. No. It, 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 it's this is a call for all of us yes all of us look in Philippians 3 13 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things that are behind me and reaching forth to those things that are before I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God mm. in Christ Jesus so me yielding to this call accepting the call of God on my life Yes. It's called a prize. Yes. It's called a mark. A mark that I make it to. You know understand what I'm mm -hmm. on your mark? You know what I mean? Yes. And so it's a mark in my life. And yes. when I get a hold of this prize, I, I get a hold of this call, I've reached that place, that mark in my life that everything takes off. Amen. When I receive and accept this call, I am called by God. He loves me so much that he called me. Take that devil. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Take that problems, take yeah. that sickness, yeah. Yeah. take that disease. I am called by God. When I accept that, then I'm at the mark of this whole life starting off just crazy blessed, just crazy victory. Yes. You remember when you were in school and they say, on your mark, get set, yeah. go. You would start from that mark and the race would start. Yes. The mark is, is that I realize I've got a high calling of God on my life. Mm, man. High calling. A high calling, that high calling. That high calling may not be to win millions of people to God in Africa. That high calling is simply this, to be conformed to the image That's of Jesus it. Christ. That's there it. is no greater calling. That's you it. can go to Africa and win 50 million people to Jesus and still mess up and go to hell because you didn't conform totally to the image of Jesus Christ. Wow. And that's it. That's the mark. That's, that's, the, high, that's the prize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mark and the prize is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But to get that, Paul says, I've got to forget what's behind me. Wow. I've got to let go of what I've been through, what I've done wrong, 
What somebody did to me, I got to get that. There's now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free made me from free. the law of sin free. and death. Amen. Amen. So I'm free. I'm not going to live in any condemnation. The devil can't judge me over my past because I have been justified by Jesus. Yes. Now I'm at the mark. Now I'm finally at the prize. The prize is, is that God called me. Yeah. Yeah. The prize I've been waiting on my whole life yeah. is to finally get to that prize. God's yeah. got a call on He's my life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. And that call, is, that call is simply being a child of God. That call is simply being conformed to the image of Jesus. That's but to right. do that, right. i got to forget what's behind me. That's yeah. right. i got to forget you what forget is behind me. And I've got to reach. I've got to reach for this prize. I've got to stretch. I've got to, I've got to push through every obstacle yeah. and keep reaching for the fact I'm called of God. Right. There, there are people that need to hear this that have been saved 40 years. Yes. That you have stopped reaching for the prize, the mark that you're called by God. Yes. You, you can give up, you can give in, you can give out, you can, you can settle. Yeah. I know a lot of Christians that have settled. They say, oh, well, uh, maybe it's God's will, maybe this is this, and maybe it's that. But you don't have to settle. You keep reaching toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Just think if people would have got this at the end of their life, they would have lived without some diseases and sicknesses and troubles. Shame on people for not giving it to them in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. So I've got to forget what's behind me and reach for that prize, reach for that call, reach for it in the name of Jesus. I am called by God. Yes. Let me try it again. I, I am, am called by God. God. I've got a call of God on my life. Am I in trouble? Wait a minute. I've got a call of God on my life. If I messed up, hold on. I've got a call of God on my life, right? Yeah. Can I establish the fact that no matter what you're doing right now, God's got a call on your life out of that. Out of it. Out of it. You know, out of it. The into Bible the says, image of Jesus. Jesus is the way. He's the way out of it. He's the truth. He's the real truth. The real truth is truth that you said something this morning. Real truth is the truth that sets you free. Yes. There's other truth. It might be true that I did that. But the real truth in God is that I'm free from that. Yeah. And now I, I have the ability to forget it. I have the ability by the blood of the <laughs> Lamb to forget it. And to reach. And to reach. And then I can just see, see a picture of someone in a race. When the race gets tight down to the end, they'll, they'll lean. They'll lean and stretch out to get to that mark. They'll lean. Surprise. And sometimes you've got to... It might be close. It might be tight. It might be times where there's things in your life you're trying to get through and get past. You're going to have to lean to the finish of it. You're going to have to lean to the finish and not slow up and let it beat you, but lean to the finish of it yes. and beat it. Yes. And you can do it through the power of God. This is this is the mark. Jesus always, like, like we said, he was on the mountain there trying to throw him off. That's pretty close to being dead, but he leaned out. He leaned out and beat them because he knew that he was called. And when you know that you're called, you're going to win at every time. Yeah. Listen to this scripture. This is very powerful. I didn't use this scripture this morning, but I want to use it right now. It says, elect 1 Peter 1-2. 1 Peter 1-2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Mm. Elect means that you were picked out and chosen. You were laid out like this. You were laid out, and God says, I choose you, you, you. I call you, choose you, call you, choose you. You're elected. You're elected. Just like you go into school, and you're, you're running for student council, and you got elected. Yeah. I want to tell all of you that you got elected. <laughs> you won. Thank you, Lord. You won because of Jesus. Yes. You won. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience. Whose obedience? Jesus' is obedience. Yes. And the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah. That's how you're that's how that you're elected through the foreknowledge of God. He called you. Yeah. He separated you even before you were born through the Holy Spirit. Hello, you understand? Yes. 
you already are separated out for God is going to get you. God is going to, he's already, he's already really delivered you from your sins, yeah. sicknesses and diseases in Jesus. All you got to do is accept them. Accept right. Them. Right. Let's just admit it in the yeah. eyes of God. It's already done. It's yeah. already settled. Yeah. All we got to do is accept it. Accept. If I lay $10,000 right there and I say, that's yours. I know you enough to know that you've already taken it and you've gone out the door Jumped and I'll be doing this table. by myself. I say, where's Cleo? Where's Cleo at? Where's Cleo go? Well, he really picked up his $10,000 and took off. That's where he is. He's out there eating fried chicken. I know what he's doing. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? God already did it all. It's already a done deal, but I still have to accept it. I have to answer the call. Yeah. I have to just pick it up and say, Lord, you want me? Okay, all right, here I am, I'm yours. I give you my life. I, give, I accept what you have already done. The blood's already been shed over you. Right. Yes. I accept what you have already done. <laughs> yes. Right. It has already been done. It was done in Jesus. I was crucified with Christ so that I could answer the call of God on my life. Yeah. I was buried with Christ so that I can answer the call. Hallelujah. Yeah. I was raised with Christ so that I can answer the call. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. When I answer the call, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. <laughs> it's no longer I that lives now. No I, Christ I lives live. in me, the hope of glory. I've answered the call. Now I'm going to be conformed in the image of his dear son. And that's through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's yeah. through the power of the blood. The I was blood. chosen. I was chosen. We were chosen to have the blood of Jesus Christ wash us. Amen. Yeah. We were chosen to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. Yeah. We were chosen to be saved by grace. Yeah. We were chosen to walk in life. We were chosen to walk in love. We were chosen to live chosen. in the glorious liberty of the we Son of God. Today. We were elected. We were picked out. We were picked out before the foundation of the world. To live on this earth for a certain time frame so that we would accept that redemption. That's it. We were chosen to be born in a time frame to accept that redemption. Somewhere in our 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 years on the earth, we were chosen to accept that redemption in time. Therefore, when we accept it in time, then we get to go to heaven and live where there's time no more. Uh, yeah. Yes. But the optimal yes. word is accept yeah that's, and that's, all that's, i've got to do is accept it and receive that's, it that's where you're at it's, that's why the bible says that this is really the kingdom of god is him giving and us receiving that's about the size of it it's him giving and us receiving everything has to be received uh, yeah. a few sundays a couple of sundays ago we talked about that yeah learning to receive and that's why the enemy fights us so in learning who we are and what we really are in christ because he knows once we receive it, then he's not. He can't work in that. He can't. There's nothing he can do against it because he knows that it's already done. He knows, and that's why he fights people with a call of God on their life, and and he fights them. And even after, you, even when you answer the call, it, it still, it still, he can still try to you work with these other things, yes. work and and people to try to get to you. But you've got to just. You know, the Bible says that it, I sit before you life and death. Choose life. So every day I've got to, every day I answer the call. That's the way I, every day I get up, I'm choosing to live for the Lord. Every day that I get up, I'm answering. Every time I open my eyes, I'm answering the call, no matter whether I'm at work or driving around. And, and, and you know, people wonder how. I used to wonder how, how do these men of God do this amazing miracles? They're just going out to do and, and, and this is the answer. They just answered the call. They just answer. If someone calls him for prayer, he answers the call. And he's still in that he's answering the call. That the call on his life to be a pastor, part of that call is to be the pastor of this church. So when we call him and we need him to pray, all he's doing is working in his call. And just answering the call. And you've got to, you've got to make that decision to answer the call. You know what? Answer it. A telephone is deceiving. In this respect, if my wife calls me on the phone and we're talking, when I hang up, her voice is no longer on the phone. Yeah. Uh huh. We hang up. But when when we answer the call of God, before we answered it, God was still on the phone. Right. And even if I hang up and rebel yeah. and hang it up, yeah. 
yeah. and walk over there and do something dumb, right. when I pick it up, That's God's right. still on the still phone. Connected. Yeah. He never hangs up. Amen. I might hang up, but and, and I'm not talking about on my wife, God forbid. You understand what I mean? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. But God always is on the phone, and he's never going to hang up on his end because he already did it all. Mm. I'm down here just trying to receive all that he did. Yeah. That's why he said that I can do above what you can ask or think. He says, I've already done it. I've already done it all. It's already done. Mm. I, as Lord, Lord, I need you to do this. It is actually already done. I just need to say, Lord, I need you to help me to receive yes. Yes. what yes. you've yes. already done. Yes. Yes. I'm not asking God to create a miracle. The miracle is already created. Yeah. I'm asking God to help me to fix, help me to receive this miracle. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. God's not out there making it. It's already made. It was made in Jesus. Yes. And it's my job to find out how to receive it. It's my job to answer this call so, so greatly. And, and really, uh, I'm trying to tell people what the, the, the will of God really is. The will of God. The will of God is being conformed to the image of Jesus. Yes. It, it really is. The will of God is, is not so much me preaching or me singing or my wife playing. That, that's a part of it, but, but, but I can do that and still make mistakes. Right. But I cannot make mistakes if I'm being conformed to the image of Jesus. That's right. I will not make, that's what's going to keep me. That's the will of God. Also, the will of God is to praise, it's to worship. There are certain few specifics not general, specifics. Yeah. Do you understand that? Right. That I know that if I don't do these, my preaching will be incapable. It will be a preacherette from a, a sermonette from a preacherette. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so these are things I've got to do. These are things that are the will of God. He called me to do these, and these are the primary, most important things. And they enable me then to get up in the pulpit. And no matter what's going on, I won't give in. I won't give up. I won't give out. Amen. I won't be led astray. Because I'm doing what the real will of God is. And that's being conformed to the image of his son. That is to be a child of God. So conformity. Y'all agree with that out yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. So conformity to Jesus is really is creating that energy that that's I need. It. That's, that's, it. That, that's why it's the first thing that you have to do. That's it's it. because if I conform to Jesus, I will be strengthened in every area. I'll yeah. be energized in every way. Yeah. I'll be moved in every, put in every right situation mm -hmm. in, under that conforming to Jesus because Jesus was never out of place no. or out of time. He fit. Or he if was you always, fit, you're not looking. Yeah. You're not searching to. If you yeah. fit, you're comfortable. Yeah. If do you, you remember, do you remember, let's throw this yes. in there. Jesus, Jesus went and... Uh, Lazarus was dead, and he starts crying. Yeah, and he just cried, and and they not they're not used to seeing Jesus cry. And I've been to funerals where that they've actually said Jesus was crying over the fact that Lazarus was dead. Yeah. No, no, no. He wasn't no. crying over the fact. I mean, I've been to funerals that he was weeping because Lazarus was dead, and Jesus is weeping because your loved one's dead. He ain't weeping because your loved one's dead. If he was a Christian, he's shouting because he's in heaven. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. So what was it? They actually thought, the people around, said, oh, you know, he's weeping. He loved Lazarus. Too bad he wasn't here to heal Lazarus. If he'd have just been here right on time, he could have healed Lazarus. They had everything messed up. They were judging his, and really, you know why he was weeping? Not because Lazarus was dead, because they didn't believe. Because they there didn't believe. They didn't believe. They didn't believe. Why? Because that broke. That, that that's what is against the will of God. Yeah. That's what is opposite and conforming to Jesus. Do you understand that? Exactly. They were weeping over the over the problem, and, G, and Jesus was weeping over the fact that they couldn't believe. Mm. They actually had it wrong. He's not crying over our sick loved ones. He's crying because we don't believe that He can take uh, care of them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Amen. He's not crying over our hurt. He's crying because we're, we're struggling getting away from it. Mm. We're struggling getting away from it. Did you know that when we're conformed to the image of Jesus, he picks out our friends. He picks out our associates. Yes. He picks out our... It's no longer we that lives, but Christ that lives in us. He picks out. He does. He does this whole thing with our lives. He sets us up with everything that is and is not to be. 
we no longer pick and choose. We get we can get very dangerous when we start picking and choosing. Right. We have to let God's will be done. Yeah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. And, that, and don't be afraid of that because no. God has not life. given you a spirit of fear. And, and there, I know people that really that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of if I start living for God, I'm going to. They're afraid they're gonna lose some some way or another. The devil's convinced them that they're gonna lose something. They're gonna they're gonna lose everything. They're gonna lose friendships and they're gonna lose, they're gonna be all alone. Well, you don't need to be don't be afraid of that. God hasn't given you a spirit of when you answer the call, you don't get a spirit of fear. You get one of love, power, and a sound mind. That's right. And he places you in a place where he placed me right here in this church, and I can look out over here. And I can see people that have done things. God has put on their hearts to do things for me. <coughs> this is my, this is the family of God, and I'm in it. Wow. So it Good. doesn't matter what if I need something. If I if I'm in a place or if I'm growing in God, if you're growing in God and you need something, answer the call. He'll put you in a place where people are there that know how to meet that need. And because we're afraid, we're afraid that we're going to lose something. We're afraid that if I get out of where I'm comfortable and come into something a little bit uncomfortable, that we're going to lose it somehow. We won't be able to make it. And I know all these things because I was there. There was a time in my life where I was there. I was afraid that if I leave where I was and come back to something else, that, that, that I wouldn't be able to make it, that I wouldn't be able to live. But this is once you answer the call, he sets it up. He he puts all your ducks in a row, so to speak. And like I said, I can look out over this audience and see people here that just have done things for me because I answered the call. It was all because I answered the call. Jesus, as he walked through this earth, man, people, he did things for people. People did things for him. And it never got messed up because he answered and all it is with making it hard for yourself and then thinking about all this other crazy and just answer the call. You're, the enemy wants to make it complicated and even the world wants to, I even heard someone say, well, I, they, they got that religion where all you have to do is say, forgive me and it's over and, and they were making a joke of it, but that ain't no joke, that's the love of God. That's the love of God, that's how he is. And it don't matter what the world says because the enemy wants to make you believe that you have to work for it. He wants to make you believe that you have to come and, and pay penance and do all. No, all you've got to do is answer the call, and then he'll justify it. He'll take his blood. He'll take the blood of Jesus. He'll wash everything away. I know this. I know that this is something that's near and dear to my heart because I've experienced it one-on-one -on -one with God. I, I know what it is to be cleansed from your past. I know what it is to have done something that you think is so terrible that I could never get in front of people and, and speak about the Lord, or I could never come and be in a church. Or if I did go to church, I'd just sit at the back and just try to get in and get out. No, but, but when he justifies you, when you accept this call and he justifies you, he's going to remove all of that mess off of you in the name of Jesus. Yes. It's going to happen. There's, there's no doubt about it. There's no questioning about it. It's going to happen because... What God says, he does it. In the beginning, he said this happened, this, and it all happened. And it keeps happening that way throughout your whole entire life. It, 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 it never, God never turns around and does something different. He does the same all the time. Once you answer that call, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just, just say, okay, I'm in, in the family of God. If you're looking for direction, the first place you need to look is Right here, right here, and just say it, just accept it, just say it right now. Okay, I accept it, I'm in the family of God, and you'll see very quickly, it didn't take long at all. Once I accepted it, within a few months, I was right here in Victory Church, headed towards what he's called, headed towards working in that call that he's given me. It didn't take any time at all. I didn't lose anything. I've gained a whole family. I've gained a whole place. I've gained a ministry. I've gained all these things. But it's in, I'm telling you this, that, it, that it's in just making that decision. To, it's that easy. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? People want to make it hard. They want to, because in the world, you, they want you to work. They want you to work for it. 
They want you to work and be perfect for it and, and, and mess with you if you're not perfect. God doesn't never want to mess with you when you mess up. He wants to just say, okay, I justified you. That's okay, you're justified. Don't worry about it. Come on in, just come on. And I tell a lot of people, just come on. That's They've heard that from me a million times. They'll ask me a question and I'll tell them, no, if you'll just come on. Just come on. If you'll just come on and just answer the call. If you just come on. You want all these, I said it earlier, you want, you want the end result, but you haven't even done taking the one step. And it's not a 12-step program, it's one step. And it's that step to Jesus. And once you get to him, uh, there's a story in the Bible. He got on the boat. And when he got on the boat, they immediately were on the other side. They were. That's the power of Jesus. That's the power of answering the call. Once you're answered, you're immediately into the family of God. You're immediately, there's things that immediately happen for you. Yeah. That there's no delay. There's no, well, you got to do this for a while and maybe we'll see. No, it's immediate. Answer the call. This is whether you watch it now or later, it doesn't matter when you answer, just answer. Mm -hmm. And when you do, your entire life, I'm telling you, God will make a way. I'm sitting here as a testimony of God making a way where I didn't see a way. I didn't see a way out. I didn't see a way through. I didn't see anything. All I could see was my past. All I could see was, well, if I live for the Lord, who's, they're going to, I'm not going to be able to do it. I won't be able to stay, but every step of the way. And I'm telling you, he'll put you in a place. He'll direct your, he'll direct your, your, your feet. He'll put you in a place where people know how to love you. People, people in this church know how to love. They know how to love. And I texted the pastor earlier this week, and one of the things I told him is that I've learned how to forget what's behind me from mm -hmm. being here in this church. I can sit here and say, I know how to forget what's behind me and reach and press on, press on. You gotta, sometimes you gotta press in there. You gotta, you gotta press. If you have to, I work a job, I have to go to that job and I have to press at that job some days to get through, to get through it. But I'm not gonna go there and fall apart and quit because really the enemy wants me, wants you to get somewhere and fall apart and quit over it. And then you're in a bigger mess than you were. If I just decide to up and quit, that ain't God's will for me. My, his will is for me to just go there and press in. And I've seen God do some things with certain people at my job that I know wouldn't have happened for them had I not been pressing. And I'm not saying that to build myself up. I'm telling you that's what Jesus wants. Some people to go somewhere and press in so they can see, even though he's pressed, even though he's, he may be going to, I can still see him loving on me and telling me what Jesus is going to do for him. And, uh, I'm telling you, just answer the call. Well, I got to. We got to get ready to quit, but I, there's a guy that's coming to our church. I won't say his name. And uh, he told me the other day, he said, you know, I, I lived. He said, I would sleep underneath stairways in two-story com uh, apartment complexes. He said, I'd go in there and lay in the corner and I'd sleep. He said, I was on drugs, selling a little bit of drugs, and I would sleep. I'd find places in apartment complexes at least keep the weather off of me. And for a couple of years, this man, he would he would sleep outside. He would try to find a way to eat. He would try to he would, he, he would try to make it. And I met him one day, and I began to tell him God's word, God's word. God loves you, God's word, God's word. Every time I see him, still to this day, if I see him, and at least thirty minutes a week. I, I spend time with him, telling him what God's word says. And he's, he doesn't have an automobile at all. He walks to church every Sunday morning. He walks home from church every Sunday morning. But this word of God, and, and he's starting to tell me now, i got a call on my life. Mm. I'm called to God. Yes. I, I'm called to God. Yes. And, and, and can you imagine being nearly 60 years old? And you don't own one thing. You don't own a car. You don't. You don't have hardly any furniture at all. You don't. You don't have a, a, a checking account. You have to go cash it somewhere. You don't have a dime in the savings. You're almost 60 years old, and you can't. You can't do really basically nothing. But now. But now, you're starting to know that the call of God's on your life. Amen. And that call of God is changing him. Yes. Amen. 
that call of God on his life. Is, he's not asking me for nothing. He's letting that call of God change. Yeah. Change. Yeah. And the other day I was doing something and I was sweating. And he, was, he, he saw me and he went. He went and walked all the way to a grocery store and bought some ice cream. And, hand it, and, and, and dished it out and handed it in a white cup to give it to me. Man. Just because he thought I was hot. <laughs> Walked all the way That's to right. the grocery store yeah. at, to give that to me. Yeah. He says, I want to be a blessing to you. Man. <laughs> he said, I, I, I know I've got a call of God on my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Incredible. And I was just thinking, if us as a, the body of Christ, we're as sensitive to that, that promise, as sensitive to the yeah. fact that it is this easy yes. and somebody would have told him yes. what we're telling him now yes. 30 years ago 30 years ago it made all the difference in the world yeah because you see the type of man he is yes and for him to it's, yeah i'm telling what he would be doing he, he, he is changing everything in his life is changing everything is rearranging because he's finally realizing that no he's been in and out of jail he's been in and out of trouble he's been on probations he's been He's, he's been in a lot of situations, but now his words are, I know I've got the call of God uh -huh. on my life. Amen. He's starting to tell me what the Bible says. He's starting to tell me things in the Word of God. Yes. He's starting to say things to me, and he doesn't care anymore who's around or where we are. He'll say, hello, Pastor Randy. God <laughs> sure is good to me today. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, he is. He so <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It's that call, and when we answer the call, that call contains everything we needed it. He doesn't, it, it'd be like me calling you, well, I want you to come over to eat with me tonight. And you say, well, we haven't. Well, we ain't having. I'm just calling you, we're just hoping something will happen. We're hoping my wife will get into the kitchen and <laughs> microwave us something. We're hoping my wife will go back. We're not hoping when we answer the call, everything is ready. Yes. Everything's prepared. Everything's there. Yes. God's got it all in store for us. God's got everything we need. Do you believe it? I believe it. God's got everything we need in the name it's of Jesus. It's all in the call. It's all in the call. All, in the all call. you have to do is realize, God loves me so much. I am so important to God. He called me. He called me. I, I watch a lot of people. They want to start preaching. They want to start teaching. They feel God. And they don't know that what they've got established first is their call to be conformed to the image of yes. Jesus. Yes. That's the call is to be like Jesus. Yes. Not not first to do all of these. That's a that comes later. It's to be like Jesus right now. Right. That changes everything around you, everything in you. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And we appreciate you watching us. And we want you to keep this conversation going oh, with you, right. with the Lord. You, you can write us, you can text us, you can call us. So many of you have been responding for the prayer clause in every other way. I get text. I'll have text by this evening that you watched it, that you're shouting. And, oh, uh, man, I appreciate it so amen. much. God is so amen. good. He's good. But you are called by God, and you've got to get that into your mind. You are called by God. You are picked out by God. You fit in this thing. You don't have to search. You don't have to be looking for answers. The answers have already been taken care of. The victory has already been won. The price has already been paid. All your sins have been forgiven. All your past is exonerated. All your future is prepared. Hey, amen. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is believe it. All you got to do is grow in it. They're being conformed to the image of Jesus. It's already there. It is already there. Amen. But what we've got to do is that we've got to get everything ready for an atmosphere for that to manifest itself. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Father, we thank you for thank everybody you. listening with us tonight. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give yes, you the yes, honor Lord. that we've got a call. The call thank of God is on all of our lives. Thank you for the and call. And we give Lord. you praise and honor in Jesus' thank you name. For the call, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah.